Welcome to another episode of Retrospective Gaming. In this episode, I am reviewing The Legend of Sword and Fairy. This is a role-playing game that's not really familiar in the Western world, but it was made in Taiwan in 1995. It's called the People's Republic of China, but they also call it Taiwan, so if I say China or Chinese, I don't know whether to refer to it as the People's Republic of China or Taiwan. Not trying to get into something political, it's just the way it is. And it's huge over there. I mean, they have TV shows based off this RPG series. It's just different sort of culture because people don't know about it in the United States and I'm guessing most of Europe. But in Taiwan, and I believe China too, it's a big deal. I was reading Felipe Pepe's blog. And he was talking about role-playing games that are not really familiar to Western audiences. I believe that's what the blog was about. And I saw this game and I wanted to try it out. And thanks to a fan translation, I was able to play it. And I wanted to do something different. So this is probably like the first JRPG type game I'm playing even though it was made in China. But you get what I'm saying. Something different. There are minor spoilers. You have been warned. So let's get started. And just to let you know, I am going to butcher some of these names, so please forgive me. I don't know Chinese, um, what, I just don't know the language, so I can't pronounce it very well, so please forgive me. Let's get on with the review. The story starts off with the protagonist, Lai Xiao Xiao. I'm going to refer to him as Lai. A spunky young man living with his aunt in a restaurant. He is just living his life day to day, but he has dreams and aspirations of leaving this little village. But something happens. His aunt gets sick. And now it starts to get interesting. In order to get a cure for his aunt, he has to travel to a mysterious magical island where he finds this fairy. This is what it looks like from her appearance. Or at least she appears to be a somewhat fairy, half, part, whatever. But now it gets even crazier. Due to some traditions or customs, he is stuck on this island and forced to marry this fairy. Thankfully, she is a kind person and lets him go home. He finds out that her name is Linger, and everything is starting to go back to normal, at least somewhat normal. Her aunt gets cured, and these two individuals form an immediate bond, but something terrible happens. Her guardian is killed. And now it's up to you to help your new companion find her mother and discover her origins and hell of a lot more. And I gotta say, I was caught off guard. This is one odd fucking story. And I mean that in a good way. Since it's a game that was made in China, there is a difference in cultures. So you see some things about Buddhisms, fairies, and some other fables, and I'm guessing folklore creatures that I'm not familiar with, but it was all new to me. But during my encounter, I went through zombies, evil monks, fire demons, ninjas, and snake demons. Now some of this stuff is familiar but some of it was new to me. But there is more tied up in all this including faction leaders, resource wars, some crazy politics, and more. It's a linear game but the story kept me playing and what impressed me the most is the focus on a few important characters. There are minor ones of course and people and things you meet along the way. But you don't have many party members with you. You mainly stick with a certain few throughout the game. But you build a natural relationship with the main crew. And it feels like good character development. With some humorous and very emotional moments. With some different range of emotions. During my playthrough I felt sad for these characters. I laughed at some of the childish and perverted things that I saw. It was really funny. Like someone spying on another character that was naked in a hot tub or whatever. Or someone getting spanked when they refused to lie about something. There's some like different uh, cultural things that happens over there in China or some of the East I'm guessing. That was new to me but it was very funny. And I just laughed at some of the bitchiness of one of the main characters. It just made me feel like a wide range of emotions but it felt natural. Now, I am playing this through a fan translation, so it's definitely some goofy English slang and some of it got lost in translation. But even then, it's still an interesting story. And it was a smart move to focus on a few characters instead of trying to put in 15 or 20 party members. It focuses on a certain few. I would say 
less than a handful and that's the strength of the story the main characters relationships and how it builds with the protagonist it, I think it was told very well there are some generic tropes like being a do-gooder and we have to do the right thing and the power of friendship but that was fine the story is well told and it got me to laugh feel embarrassed for the characters and genuinely feel bad and that's the mark of a good story there's a lot of crazy things you see in this game it's fantasy of course so you go through a lot of shit with these characters you go to a lot of different places but even then it felt kind of humble and natural and I really like the way the story was told another thing I like about the story is one of the main components of it going on besides your main character and trying to find Linger's mother and her background is the political stuff the different factions fighting the resource wars how it goes into the politics of the different factions and there's many battles going on and it almost seems like there's genocides going on and lots of death and things involving resources and different people trying to take over so I really enjoyed that part of the story too I believe it mixed in very well and flowed well with all the different stuff going on with your party if I had any issues with the story I just felt like it was a little bit more linear I would have liked more side quest and uh, other areas to visit like optional stuff but other than that my main issues aren't with the story I fucking enjoyed it the gameplay is similar to other turn-based JRPGs your characters take turns in battle they level up and you have no choice in the skills that you get when you level up it's automatic you do gain skills and you can buy equipment for your characters and have different sets of equipment but that's about it when it comes to customizing the party members other than that it's pretty easy I mean I did not have to do that much grinding and I really didn't find myself needing a lot of advanced equipment to get through the game I didn't die that much there were some mid bosses and bosses where I did die and some frustrating fights but the gameplay overall the combat was pretty easy I just found myself using the uh, same spells over and over again every party member you get has some sort of advanced healing spell so at a certain point they can all heal each other so it's pretty easy and another thing that disappointed me with the gameplay is not only that it's easy it's just there's not really any complex puzzles or anything like that a lot of the dungeons in the game is kinda like a funhouse maze there are a lot of twists and turns you can take and you can run into a lot of dead ends there's a lot of backtracking but instead of but other than stepping on some pillars to unlock some paths there weren't really any complex puzzles barely any puzzles at all and that was disappointing what really gets you through this game is the dialogue between characters one thing about the combat though and Felipe Pepe did mention this in his blog is that the combat does feel like there's weight to it when your characters get hit you do feel clank you do hear sound effects so he was right and I will give him credit for that it does feel like there's a some sort of like realistic thing to the combat like a bit of weight when you get hit and another thing is is with the characters when one of them is almost dead there will be a conversation between the characters they'll be concerned for each other and when one of them dies another character gets a temporary stat boost so as I said before with the characters having a good relationship and good character development there is a sense of unity between the characters that you feel not only in the story but in the combat too but other than that the game was too easy for me and I wish there were more puzzles but it was still interesting enough that I got through the game it's not really grindy so that's a plus when it comes to the you know dull combat and not really pu complex puzzles so there's that although I do have to say I do like some of the spells like the wine god where you can summon this big fat dude that gets paid in wine to do a fuckload of damage and I do like some of the animations and the way some of the characters do their spells so even though the combat was kinda dull I did like seeing some of the spells the atmosphere the characters and the story are strong enough that they got me through the dull parts of the game when you go through each of the towns 
they each have their own little side story going on and it's fleshed out it's not something that you complete in five minutes or something that's thrown away there's different cultures there's different situations going on in these towns and different characters you meet and as I said before it's fleshed out there's a lot of meat to them and they're good side distractions before you have to get on with the main story it's a nice path there to the end of the game and that's one of the things that I really enjoyed going through one of the areas and seeing that they're hysterical about a supposed zombie plague and what you have to do or another town where there's this big thief mystery going on and you're not allowed to leave the town until they figure the place out there's a lot going on in this game and talking to the town's folks seeing their reactions to the different stuff going on like the resource war or taking a side diversion to flesh out some of the side characters a bit more and figure out their background or you might need their help and I felt that it was very detailed I'm not gonna spoil much but there are a bunch of places that you go to in this game and there's a lot to see and it's just it caught me off guard I was expecting this game to honestly be mediocre but I'm pleasantly surprised and I'm happy that I was wrong because this is an enjoyable experience the music well I'm not the biggest fan of the music there were some tracks but some of it does get repetitive but overall it's a great package I really enjoyed this game despite the flaws that I had with it it can be dull when it comes to combat there's not much of a challenge but the story and the characters it's something different especially if you're from the West or you're from Europe you might not be used to this type of storytelling well not this type of storytelling but some of the cultural things this was made in Taiwan and it's called the People's Republic of China so I don't know whether to say Taiwan or the People's Republic of China so forgive me but it's something different I definitely recommend it you can get a fan translation it's easy to install so check out the legend of sword and fairy I recommend it thank you for watching another video if you want to leave a comment go ahead have a great day